Welcome to our lesson on the uses and abuses of percentages. So there are three ways that we normally use percentages as fractions. Basically, when you just talk about something as a percentage, right? Blah, blah, blah is this percentage of something, you know, like 13,000 newspaper employees represents 2.6% of the newspaper workforce. Or we can use it to describe a change. So a stock fell by 15%, right? Or the price has been reduced by 10%. And we can also use it for comparisons. This battery lasts 125% longer than the other one, but costs 200% more. So some examples. An opinion poll finds that 35% of 1,069 people surveyed said that the president is doing a good job. How many said the president is doing a good job? Well, all I have to do is take 35% of 1,069. You just remember the word of always means multiplication. So it's 35%, right, times 1069. 35% is 35 per means over, and cent means 100. So 35% is 35 over 100, which becomes 0.35 as a decimal. You do that simple math. And of course, you got to round of the whole number because you can't have 0.15 of a person. And it says 374 people responded this way, right? Now, there's absolute change and relative change. And um, relative change is a, a fraction, right? Absolute change is just an amount. So the absolute change between something is just the pure change. So if a price of a shirt went from $40 to $30, that was an absolute change of negative $10. But the relative change would be the absolute change divided by the starting point, right? So it started at 40, it went down to 30. So that's a difference of 10 over 40, right? And 10 over 40 is 1 fourth. That would be a 25% reduction, right? That's relative change. So relative change is just when you turn it into a percentage by taking that absolute difference and dividing by what we call the reference value, but it really is dividing by where it started, right? So if you started at $40 and changed, then that becomes your reference value. If you started at $100 and changed, then $100 becomes your reference value. It just depends on where you start. So during a six-month period, lunar industry stock doubled in price from $7 to $14. What were the absolute and relative changes in the stock price? Okay, well, the absolute change is just the difference between the two, right? 14 minus 7, it went up by $7. The relative change is we take that difference and we divide by its starting point, right? So it went up $7. There's my 14 minus 7 but it started at seven. So seven over seven is one, one times 100%, it went up by 100%, which makes sense, right? If it doubles, it goes up by 100%. Now, here's the interesting thing that will help us um, look at some of our uh, misuses later. What if it went in the other direction? If it went from 14 down to seven, it would still be a difference of seven, but now it would start at 14. So it'd be seven over 14, which is one half, and that would be only 50%, right? So going up by 100% is the same thing as going down by 50%. So when you have a change in different directions, it's never gonna be the same percentage. And the same goes if you go up by 10 and down by 10, that won't include, uh, by percent, right? Up by 10%, down by 10%, that won't be the same dollar amount either. So that's one of the misuses of, of percentages. People think that both directions are the same thing, and they aren't. You bought a new laptop computer three years ago for $1,000 today. It's worth only $300. Describe the absolute and relative change in the value. Well, it went down by $700, right? So negative $700 is the absolute change, right? The depreciation. But if we take that negative 700 and put it over the starting value of 1,000, then it went down 700 over 1,000, or it went down by 70%. It's worth 70% less than it was. So absolute difference and relative difference, that's the difference between the two. You can see that uh, it's the same thing as change, right? We called absolute uh, change and relative change. Now we're looking at absolute and relative differences. It's the same darn thing, right? So whether they call it a change or a difference, you can see the formulas are the same, right? The absolute difference is still the actual difference, which is the actual change, right? And the relative difference is just the same thing as the relative change. So uh, whether they use difference or change, it means the same thing. Don't, don't try and don't let them confuse you by using those different phrases.
So recent data showed that California ranked first among the 50 states in average income at about $68,900 per person, and West Virginia ranked last at $46,600. How much lower is average income in West Virginia? How much higher is average income in California? And then answer both questions in both absolute and relative terms, right? Okay, well, the absolute is easy, right? Just take the difference between the two. And we just say that, you know, um, if we look at going from West Virginia, right, to California, West Virginia is 22,300 less. That's right, it's negative. And the difference would be, the relative difference would be that number divided by California because we're, we're comparing it to California, right? They are how different from California, right? So they are 32.4% less. But if you go in the other direction, we'll see a different um, result, right? So 32.4% less. Keep that in mind. Now, if we go the other, com when we compare California to West Virginia, we get that same absolute difference of 22,300. Only this time we say it's positive because California is more and we're comparing it to West Virginia. And then when we do the relative, we take that difference right and now we compare it to 46,600 because again we're saying what's its difference in comparison to West Virginia so that becomes the reference value and now we get 47.9% higher this should be positive i don't know why there's a negative sign there so that means california is the average income in california is about 47.9 or almost 48% higher than West Virginia, whereas West Virginia was 32% lower. So you see what I mean? It's the same money, right? It's still $22,300 difference. That didn't change. But when you look at it in one direction, it's a 32% less than kind of thing. And in the other direction, it's a 47.9% greater than thing. So that gets us to the idea of more than and less than. When we talk about a percent more than, it's really just 100 plus that percentage and when we talk about a percent less than it's just 100 percent minus that percentage to turn it into an of right so if you are 15 percent more than something you're 115 percent of that thing if you're 10 percent less than something then you're 90 percent of that thing and that makes it a lot easier to do the math because usually we want of because remember of means multiplication and then we know how to deal with the numbers. So for instance, Carol earns 2% more than William. What is Carol's income as a percentage of William's and then how many times as large as William's income is Karen? Well, we know if, you know, P percent more is just 100 plus P. So if Carol's income is 200% more, it's 100 plus 200, so it's 300% of Williams. And because 300% equals 3, that means Carol earns three times as much as William. A 25% off sale, how does an item sale price compare to its original price? Well, if you take 25% off, right, 100 minus 25, that means 75% is left. That means everything is basically 75% of the original price. So obviously, if it was originally 100 bucks, it's now only going to be 75 so percentages of percentages. When a change or difference is expressed in percentage points, assume it's an absolute change or difference. And with the percentage sign or the word percent, it is a relative change or a difference. So if a bank increases its interest rate from 3% to 4%, the interest rate increase by one percentage point. And its relative change, right, would be one over three, or it went up by 33%, right? Because if it goes from three to four, it went up a third of what it used to be. Now, if the compared value is P percent more than the reference value, then the compared value is just going to be 100 plus P times the reference, right? We talked about that if it's more than, it just becomes 100 plus that of, right? And less than, it becomes 100 minus that of. So you purchase a shirt with a labeled pre-tax price of $21. The local sales tax is 6%. What is your final cost? Well, you could take 6% of 21 and then add it back to 21, but it's a lot easier to just go, well, the, the end price is going to be the 100%, which is the cost of the shirt, plus the 6% for the sales or sales tax. So it's going to be 106% of, right, multiplication, 106% of that price. So you just take 21 times 1.06, and there's your final price.
Okay, some abuses, some, some times when this stuff gets, you know, misinterpreted. Beware of shifting reference values. So this is what I talked about where a 10% pay cut is followed by a 10% pay raise. That doesn't get you back to where you started because you're doing 10% of different things. So think of it this way. You start off earning $100 an hour. Now you take a 10% pay cut. You're now making $90 an hour. Now they come along and go, okay, we're going to bump you back up by giving you a 10% pay raise, but they're giving you 10% of 90, which is only $9, and you only go up to 99, right? So percent changes in the different directions never equal each other. Watch out for less than nothing. So things like this will decrease your caloric intake by 150%. How can you decrease something by 150%, right? If you decrease it by 100%, it's zero right? It can't be decreased by 150%. So watch out for those kind of uh, misleading things. And then don't average averages. If 70% of the boys and 60% of the girls in a class voted to go to the water park, then saying 65% of the students in the class voted to go to the water park, i.e. averaging these two numbers is totally wrong. That would only be correct if the number of boys and girls were exactly the same, right? Otherwise you have to take a weighted average. So don't average averages. Don't ever do that. Okay, so here's some examples of those misuses, right? Stockbroker offers the following defense to angry investors. I admit that the value of your investments fell 60% during my first year on the job. This year, however, their value has increased by 75%, so you are now 15% ahead. That's not true at all. Again, think about if you started at 100 and it loses 60, you're now down to 40. If it grows by 75%, you're only doing 75% of 40, which is only $30, right? Because three fourths of forty is thirty dollars. Now you're back up to seventy. You're still thirty percent lower than what you used to be, not fifteen percent ahead. And this guy doesn't know basic math. And here's what I was talking about, um, you know, written out. Okay, a store advertises it'll take one hundred fifty percent off the price of all merchandise. What should happen when you go to the checkout to buy a five hundred dollar item? Well, if the price were $100 off, the item would be free, free. So if the price is $150 off, the store should pay you half the item's cost or 250 bucks. More likely, the store manager did not understand the percentages. So go to that store and buy everything. Um, in baseball, a player's batting average represents a percentage of at-bats in which he got a hit. For example, a batting average of 350 means the player got a hit 35% of the times he was at-bat. Suppose a player has a batting average of 0.2 basically mean 20% during the first half of the season and 0.4 during the second half of the season, can you conclude that his batting average for the entire season was 300? The average of 200 and 400. Why or why not? Well, the answer would be no, because even though it's halfway through the season, he didn't necessarily have the same number of at-bats during that, right? So you can't simply average those. Um and this just talks about that, right? Where you would have to figure out how many at-bats they actually had to then be able to figure out what their actual total batting average was. All right, that's everything we need to know for percentages.